acts of willing cannot be free in the radical sense of being uncaused because they're realized in brain events, which are not supernatural. However, we can ask whether consciously willing to move or its neural realization really does cause the bodily movements that it is subjectively felt to cause. Given that conscious willing must itself be caused by previous neural events, under a physicalist worldview, we can ask whether or not the readiness potential is a signature of neural activity that is causal of willing and or movement itself. That's an empirical question that the Libet experiments don't answer. My group and other groups have done further experiments using Libet-like paradigms in an effort to try to answer that question. While the discovery that consistent patterns of brain activity can precede conscious awareness of wanting to move is interesting, in one sense, it just had to be the case, since all brain events have to be caused by, though not necessarily deterministically caused by, preceding brain events. Libet made the very strong claim that preceding unconscious computations cause all human actions. He did this on the basis of an unsurprising finding, namely that conscious willing is preceded by brain activity in one tiny domain of human action, namely meaningless, repetitive, and inconsequential hand movements, and generalized this to the claim that the conscious feeling of willing is not the cause of any of our actions in any domain of human action or decision-making. That's a pretty brave and I think unfounded, even reckless overgeneralization. Just because something applies to repetitive and inconsequential hand movements does not mean that consciousness plays no role in the outcomes that follow our conscious deliberations concerning matters of consequence, such as whom to marry or where to go to college. Even if the readiness potential or the lateralized readiness potential begins before our earliest conscious awareness of wanting to move, the brain activity that gives rise to these event-related potentials may have no direct relationship with the conscious feeling of willing at all. Libet's finding simply shows that the average of these brain potentials begins before the average time of becoming aware of wanting to move. There's no evidence that the brain processes that precede the feeling of willing cause either the conscious feeling of willing or even cause the motor act. They might just be random events in the brain that lead later brain events to tip one way or the other. Or there might be non-random biases in us that can be picked up by EEG that are not the direct cause of a subsequent event. To make this point more clearly, let's consider a more recent experiment in the tradition of the Libet experiment that seems even more dire for free will. In an fMRI experiment by Haynes and colleagues published in 2008, scientists were able to decode from brain data in frontal and parietal regions whether a subject would decide to move to the right or to the left up to 10 seconds before they actually moved. Their ability to predict was above chance performance, namely 50%, but was only barely so at about 60% in the seconds before the decision. It's unlikely that a brain state 10 seconds before an arbitrary, meaningless decision, such as picking left or right, already computes that decision. Instead, an earlier brain state might bias that decision. There are lots of cases where pre-existing biases affect our later outcomes without ruling out choice. For example, I know you're a human, so I know that you have a bias to sleep at night. In fact, for most of you, I can predict with above 90% accuracy that you will be asleep tonight at 3.24 a.m. In fact, I can predict well above chance that 10 years from now, you'll be asleep at 3.24 a.m. Does this mean your consciousness plays no role in your actions or that you lack the ability to choose? No, it means you have pre-existing, perhaps unconscious biases that bias your later decisions, such as when to go to bed or whether to choose left or right, or even whom to marry. Let's look even more closely at the Libet paradigm to find other problems with it. One problem is that the timing of the beginning of the readiness potential is not correlated with the later timing of feeling the urge or intent to move. Following the observation of John Stuart Mill in 1843 that one characteristic of causal relations is covariation of causes and effects, Two of my neuroscience colleagues, Haggard and Eimer, argue that the presence of a temporal covariation between the timing of the onset of the readiness potential or the lateralized readiness potential and the timing of the feeling of consciously willing to move, time W, would 
be at least consistent with a causal relationship, while a lack of temporal covariation would rule out the possibility of one or both of these brain potentials being the cause of the conscious awareness of commanding or intending to move. In 1999, Haggard and Eimer reported that the timing of the readiness potential was not correlated with the time of the conscious feeling or urge to move, time W, but the timing of the beginning of the lateralized readiness potential was correlated with the conscious urge to move. In their words, this finding rules out the readiness potential as the unconscious cause of the conscious state upon which W judgment depends, but it is consistent with the lateralized readiness potential having that role. My group carried out an exact replication of their study with many more subjects, and in our hands, we found neither a temporal correlation between the onset of the readiness potential and the moment of conscious willing, time W, replicating Haggard and Eimer, nor did we find such a temporal relationship between the onset of the lateralized readiness potential and the timing of conscious willing. Thus, following the same logic, we concluded that neither the readiness potential nor the lateralized readiness potential is likely to be an unconscious cause of the conscious state upon which W judgment depends. Yes, conscious willing is preceded by brain activity, but the brain activity that gives rise to these event-related potentials is not causally driving conscious feelings of willing. But does it cause the motor act? Another assumption underlying Libet's conclusions is that there is a causal connection between the readiness potential or lateralized readiness potential and impending motoric actions. If the readiness potential or the lateralized readiness potential is not causally related to movement production or execution, then findings about them could not show that conscious willing does not play a role in producing movements. To that end, my colleagues and I carried out various versions of the Libet experiment where people had to make a voluntary choice without making a motor act. Without getting lost in the details of these experiments, which you can read about in the accompanying material, the results of our experiments suggest that the readiness potential does not reflect uniquely motor-related processes. Our data are consistent with other possible explanations for the readiness potential that suggests that it may instead reflect more domain-general activity, such as the buildup of anticipation or perhaps even spontaneous random fluctuations. Scherger and colleagues in 2012 published an account of the readiness potential according to which it's essentially an average of random activity that crosses a threshold just prior to movement, and it is the random crossing of this threshold that triggers the movement. On their account, the readiness potential is effectively an artifact of a random process that drifts to a threshold when we average backward in time, only among those cases where the threshold was randomly crossed, it looks as if it is a non-random process that moves towards the threshold, as can be seen from this figure from their paper. If their account is correct, and finger movements in Libet-like scenarios are generated automatically upon the crossing of such a threshold, then neither our experiments nor those of Libet test for free will because there would in fact be very little in the way of conscious willing occurring on each trial. Furthermore, Sugar and colleagues suggest that their model can explain why a feeling of willing is consistently reported just prior to the movement. According to their model, the crossing of the threshold represents a neural commitment to move now, and it is this event that subjects report as the feeling of willing to move at time W. Beginning at that point in time, the typical process of motor preparation and execution unfolds, accounting for the approximately 150 millisecond delay between time W and the movement. In this framework, the timing of the movement is not determined until the threshold is crossed. I think future work is needed to test the sugar et al. hypothesis more directly, but it would certainly be damning of the Libet paradigm if it turns out to be correct.